Sir Clive Miles Sinclair, born 30th of July 1940, is an English entrepreneur and inventor, known for his work in consumer electronics in the late 1970s and early 80s. During his early years, Sinclair had holiday jobs at electronic companies, whilst at Solitron he inquired about the possibility of electric propelled personal vehicles. When he was 10, and the, the prep school he was at, which was a very good one, said they couldn't teach him any further mathematics. <laughs> he, was, he was up to and beyond uh, the level of his own teachers. So that he's, he's had a pretty good brain uh, ever since. While at school he wrote his first article for Practical Wireless. And he was also featured on the front cover. Sinclair formed his first company, Sinclair Radionics, in July 1961. The first Radionics product, an audio amplifier. The microamplifier was launched in 1962. One consistent feature of the Sinclair range, they were sold as build-it-yourself kits. Though also available as ready-assembled at a higher price. Sinclair's long-standing enthusiasm for high-tech names revealed itself in the X10 audio amplifier. Yet another miniature radio kit was launched in 1965, the Micro FM. It was hailed by Sinclair as the world's first pocket size FM tuner receiver with impressive design features. Polished and brushed two tone metal front panel, spun metal tuning control. In styling, this is the most elegant, most professional looking design in miniaturized equipment ever made available to constructors. And is one you will be very proud to possess. Sinclair's final 1960s radio kit was the 1967 Micromatic. Yet again, it was billed as the world's smallest radio. The tag of world's smallest had by now become a well-established marketing gimmick for Sinclair. Sarah! Sarah! Sarah, can you hear me? Over! Sarah, if you can hear me, come in! Sarah, can you hear me? Over! Simon? As early as 1963, Clive Sinclair was fascinated by the possibility of producing a miniature television. By 1966, the Sinclair team had advanced to the point where they were able to display a prototype miniature TV. Dubbed the Microvision, at the radio and television show at Olympia. Although Sinclair prematurely advertised the Microvision as being an amazing Sinclair triumph, the device never went into production. It was simply too difficult to manufacture due to the way that it had been constructed. Technology had also moved on, and the Microvision returned to the drawing board for another decade. In 1972, Radionics launched its first electronic calculator, the Executive. It was considerably smaller than its competitors since it had been possible to use hearing aid sized batteries, the world's first slimline pocket calculator, for £79.95. The calculator only included basic maths functions, and the LED display required lots of power. It is often credited as being the world's first attractively styled calculator that did not require mains power to be used like prior calculators. The executive was a phenomenal success, earning Sinclair £1.8 million in profit. I remember um, mentioning this thing which I didn't understand what he was talking about at all, that he had this idea for a 
thing like a pocket computer. And um, he, he didn't, had no idea how it would take, but it was going to be, you know, getting rid of the slide rule and so on. And um, in fact, of course, it was the pocket calculator. In 1973 the slightly larger Sinclair Cambridge was introduced at a far cheaper price of £29.95. A cheaper executive was also launched shortly after. In addition to expanding the Cambridge range, the Sinclair Scientific was launched in 1975. It was a scientific pocket calculator for the very competitive price of £49.95. In 1977 a revised model the Scientific Programmable, was released at £29.95. In 1975, was the launch of the Oxford range of briefcase calculators. He also attempted to capture the top-end calculator market with the Sinclair Sovereign, available in plated gold or silver. The calculator was critically acclaimed for its excellent engineering, its design and enjoyed short success. But DG Leisure Center arrives at Arding and Hobbs and smashes the price barrier. With the high-function Sinclair Cambridge percentage calculator, now only $7.95, including, yes, including that. The 13-function Cambridge Scientific with logarithmic keys for only $12.95, including that. See all the superb Sinclair range at the DG Leisure Center at Arding and Hobbs, Clapham Junction, Southwest 11. In August 1975, Sinclair introduced the digital black watch at £17.95 in kit form, and £24.95 ready built, although this wasn't available to buy until January 1976, including a four-digit LED display. It suffered from technical flaws related to the design of the case, the chip, the battery and accuracy. Not only was the watch unreliable, Radionics was not able to fulfill the orders it had taken. As a result, Radionics made its first loss in the financial year April 1974-75. This had a devastating effect on Sinclair's finances, and the company would have gone bankrupt had not the government, through the National Enterprise Board, stepped in to support it. This is the newest way to tell the time. The Black Watch. Developed in Britain by Sinclair. It's electronic, no moving parts. Digital, to tell you the time precisely. And quartz controlled, so you're sure that time is right. In fact, for a year, we'll replace your watch free if it doesn't keep time to a second a day. Look out for the black watch in today's papers or tomorrow's. The MTV1 Micro TV was the second model of a near pocket sized television. It was shown to the public at trade shows in London and Chicago in January, 1977, and released for sale in 1978. Development spanned 10 years and included a cash infusion of £1.6 million from the UK government in 1976. The MTV1 used a 2-inch black and white cathode ray tube, CRT. Wolsey Electronics in Wales, manufactured it for Sinclair. The original price tag proved to be too high to sell many of them. Its original cost was £205, which in 2019 with inflation, is £1,283. Well, I hope in the parks they use an earpiece which cuts out the speaker, but I'm sure it will be used in parks. Though I think the businessman is probably one of the, the most important customers in the first state. He can carry it wherever he goes, he can use it in his hotel, in a, on a train, in a car, um, an ideal means of keeping in touch. Sinclair lost over £1.8 million in 1978, eventually selling its remaining inventory to liquidators, at greatly reduced prices. The MTV-1B, released later in 1978 at the much lower price of £99. Sinclair himself was certain that the new and improved TV-1B, a more efficiently designed model, launched in the autumn of 1978 would take off, causing demand to spiral and saving the company. In the event, the gamble failed. The TV-1B was the last product from Sinclair Radionics. In July 1979, the National Enterprise Board, Sinclair's government backers, announces plans to sell off calculator and TV interests of Sinclair Radionics. Sinclair resigned and received a £10,000 golden handshake. 
The rights including the Microvision and Enterprise calculators were sold to Binatone for over £1 million. In January 1980 Sinclair Radionics ceases to exist. Sinclair formed another company, initially called Abel's Deal Limited, in 1973. This changed name several times, eventually becoming Science of Cambridge Limited in July 1977. In November 1980, Science of Cambridge was renamed Sinclair Computers Limited. And in March 1981, Sinclair Computers was renamed again as Sinclair Research Limited.